global Likud challenge. The problem that we have in today's maximum score from performing multiplication operation. Here in this question, we are given two arrays, nums array and multiplier array. What do we need to do? We need to identify the maximum score that can be generated after performing n operations. And there are a few rules that are specified in the question. I'll be walking you through these rules as well as the algorithm to solve the question why the presentation. So let's quickly hop on to it. Get back to the problem. Given the nums array, you are given the multiplier array. And what you need to do, you need to identify the maximum score that can be generated after performing m operations. And m signifies the length of your multiplier array. And with each operation, you have two options. You can you need to select an element from the multiplier array and you can multiply it with either the leftmost index in nums or the rightmost index in nums. Either the leftmost index or the rightmost index. And after performing m operations, one for each element in the multiplier array, you need to tell what is the maximum score that could be generated. The most obvious approach after reading this question that comes to everybody's mind that we can go in the greedy manner. However, greedy will not lead to the maximum result. Why I am saying this? Let's tr let's try with the same example. So right now we are at three and you have two options either to choose one or three. So as per the greedy algorithm, you will select three. So three into three gives you nine. Let's proceed ahead. Three got consumed and let's me move to the next element and this three is also gone. The next element that we have is two for two. Which one are we going to select? one or 18 we'll select 18 so 2 into 18 gives you 36 and 18 is gone so is 2 we move to the next pointer we have 5 for 5 the answer remains as 1 so 5 into 1 is 5 the total sum turns out to be 9 plus 5 is 14 14 plus 36 gives you 50 is this the right answer no it's not the right answer how why i'm saying this let's go with the another approach Let's restart the iteration. At three, I have two options. Either to go for the leftmost element, which is one, or I can go for the rightmost element, which is three. So let's assume I select three this time. So my total score gets updated to three into three gives me nine. So this element is gone. So does this one. Now let's move on to the next multiplier element, which is two. At two, I have two options. Either to go for the leftmost element, which is one, or the rightmost element, which is 18. This time, instead of selecting 18, what I'm going to do, I'll select one and I'll keep 18 for the later portion because some bigger element may exist in future and multiplying that element with 18 can lead to more high or higher result. So I'll consume one instead of 18. So let's do that. We get one into two gives you two and one is gone. So does two. Let's move on to the next element that we have is five. Only one element is left in nums, which is 18. 5 into 18 gives you 90. So let's write that up. And the total sum turns out to be 101, which is way much higher than the greedy approach that we followed. Also, that signifies that we need to consider all the possibilities that we may exist as part of computing the answer. And therefore, uh, since overlapping cases would be there, we have to consider dynamic programming approach. How we will be doing that? Let's move on to the next slide. Let's consider a hypothetical scenario where we are given a long array and uh, we will try to de derive the equations for our dynamic programming algorithm. How to go about it? Let's start the iteration. Let's assume we are given the long array and L represents the leftmost index of this array, right represent or R represents the rightmost index of this array. We have the multiplier array given to us. We will use I to keep track of the index under consideration in the multiplier array and the values for I can range from zero and goes up till M where M is the length of the multiplier array. And if I select, if I ask you guys, we are at the ith index in the multiplier array and what two options do we have? Either we can pick up the element from the leftmost index or we can pick up the element from the rightmost index. If we go for selecting the leftmost index, what would be the equation? So we multiply the multiplier element, which is mul at the ith index with nums at the leftmost index. Pretty simple and straightforward, very obvious. What remains after consuming the leftmost index in my nums array? It is left plus one up till right. So since we have consumed this element, we will increment this to the next pointer, which will be L plus one. And uh, the rightmost index remains the same because this portion of the array is to be considered. Th there, that's the reason we have passed in 
left plus one to the same recursive method and right index remains the same. Along with this, we should increment our i pointer because we have identified and, and consumed one possibility that corresponds to mulls of i and we will be incrementing and looking for the future values which would come from i plus one. Let's do the same thing assuming instead of picking up the leftmost element, we picked up the rightmost element. And since we picked up the rightmost element, what would be the equation like? Mull at the i ith index gets multiplied by nums at the rightmost index. Along with this, we should write the equation for the remaining portion of the elements that we have. So leftmost rem index remains the same. We reduce the rightmost pointer by one and i again gets incremented by one for the next iterations to happen. Once we have identified a uh, pick left value and pick right value, what do we do? We identify the maximum value out of these two and we set it at dp of left comma right. Pretty simple and straightforward guys. It's exactly the same steps I have written that was specified in the question itself. So the question gave you a lot of hints with respect to solving this problem up. Now let's move on to the coding section. There is a small catch over here, which I'll talk in the coding section. Rest of the things I'll exactly follow the same. I have created two private methods, one for keeping track of number of elements that I have in my nums array. Other one is for mulls array. And this is a map that I have used in order to submit the code using memoization technique of random programming. So let's start the iteration. So the value of M and N sets up, uh, we initialize the memoization array uh, with new integers and uh, the parameter that I have passed over here is N cross N. And in the question, it is also specified that N would always be greater than M. So we are pretty safe with respect to it. Let's walk through the core algorithm that I have written in the method of DP. So what parameters does it accepts? It accepts the leftmost index. It accepts the rightmost index, which is this one. It accepts my nums array. It accepts my mulls array. And the last one is keeping track of the index under consideration in my mulls array. If my ith index has reached my terminal state, that means i happens to be equal to m, I abort the process and return zero from that because that's my termination condition. What do I do next? I check whether have I pre-computed the value for the result starting from the leftmost index comma rightmost index ever in the past. If I have that answer with me, I reutilize it. So this is a typical way of memoization in recursion or dynamic programming. Let's proceed ahead. Let's look at the next two lines, which is picking up left and picking up right. So these are exactly the same that I showcased in the presentation. And once you have computed them up, what do you do? You select the maximum one out of these two and set it to your result value at left comma right. So let's try and submit this up. This solution is perfect and it should ideally work. However, it will give you memory limit exceeded exception. So let's see that exception memory limit exceeded. So the concern here is the size that we have created for our uh, memoization, which is basically reducing the time complexity. However, this memory limit is getting, getting exceeded. Had memory limit not a concern for us, the solution would have worked. So how do we optimize on this memory limit? Can we do something better? The answer is yes. Let's reduce the memory size from value of n into n to m into n. How to go about it? Let's walk through the coding section. So let me just comment this up and let me just uncomment this up and let's try and submit this first. So as to check whether it works or not. Accepted, which is pretty good in terms of time complexity and memory. And if you carefully observe over here, then we have updated the size of our memoization array from n into m to m into m. And in the question, it is specified that n will always be greater than m. Let's walk through the DP helper method that I have created, which is responsible for the core logic. Instead of keeping r as my index over here, I have filled in i, which is basically keeping track of the element under consideration in my mulls array. So again, this remaining condition remains the same. If i happens to be equal to m, I return zero. If we have pre-computed the value in the past for l comma i, then we reutilize it. Otherwise, what do we do? We compute the left pick value. There is a small deviation in the equation that we previously discussed. 
so here what do we do we multiply nums of left into mls of i so this portion remains the same however let's talk about the rest of the equation we pass in dp and uh, we pass increment the value of left pointer i also gets incremented by 1 mls and nums remains the same what about the rightmost index so we will keep track of the rightmost index using the combination of n i and l what i am trying to say let's walk through the next equation so we let's understand pick right so pick right uh, the interesting part lies over here so mls of i gets multiplied with n minus i minus l minus 1 so if you carefully take few examples and write it on paper and pen then you will realize that this will signify the rightmost element and since this signifies the rightmost element we multiply it with i and identify the total product that comes as the result and we pass in 2 dp of l comma i plus 1 nums and mul so this is the final equation we select the maximum out of these two and we set it at left uh, memoization of left comma i so this is it let's try and submit this up as i previously told as well and still if you are interested in looking out for the bottom up approach then anuj has already raised a pr on coding decoded github repo where he has beautifully explained the bottom up approach so this this approach is slightly higher than what we just discussed you are open to understand this up and it's pretty simple and straightforward almost exactly on the same lines as i just talked over to you guys i hope you thoroughly enjoyed these sessions i'm attaching the link to the solution in the coding de coding de github repo so do check them out with this let's wrap up today's session i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question but till then goodbye